It's time for a video journey through some of the world's strangest and most mysterious archaeological discoveries. They're finds that somehow don't fit what we think we know about the ancient world. We understand a little about all of them, but we don't have the full picture on any of them. Maybe you could fill in some of the blanks. Let's find out now. Our journey begins at the world-famous site of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. There's a little-known back corridor in the church, and inside that corridor is a massive stone slab leaning against a wall. The slab is covered in graffiti that's been scrawled onto its surface by pilgrims visiting the site over many centuries. However, when the slab was moved ahead of renovations in April 2022, experts were shocked to discover spiral motifs carved into the other side of the slab. Through studying these marks, archaeologists are now fairly sure that the slab was once part of a high altar that stood in the church during the medieval era. There are empty spaces on the slab that would once have been inlaid with glass and marble. The style of the piece is typical of the Cosmatesque style, which emerged from medieval Rome during the 12th century. Today, you can see a similar altar standing in Westminster Abbey in London, England. How the altar came to be discarded in a corridor and then used as a canvas for ancient graffiti artists is unknown, but it will now be cleaned up and put back on display somewhere more fitting. Back in 2001, archaeologists discovered a lost Mayan city called El Patan in the jungles of Guatemala. Within the city is a pyramid known as Las Pinturas because of the beautiful, brightly colored murals inside its first chamber. A recent study of Las Pinturas has revealed fragments of two murals that are believed to contain the oldest known example of the Mayan calendar. The Mayans had a ritual way of organizing time and believed that they'd pinpointed the year that the world would end. Fortunately, they were wrong about that, as the year they'd identified was 2012, and that's long since been and gone. The calendar fragments date to the early Maya period of around 2,200 years ago. The calendar, known as the Zolkin, splits years up into 260 days, roughly equivalent to the human gestation period. Rather than having specific names for months or weeks, the calendar uses more abstract names, like Seven Deer, Eight Star, Nine Jade, and so on. These 260-day years were grouped into sets of 52, which was known as the Calendar Round. We still don't understand much about the ritual meaning of the Mayan calendar, but discoveries like this one get us closer to finding out. The Kermsum Disc has spent most of the past few centuries hidden inside the crypt of a ruined church in Poland. It's hidden no longer, and the archaeologists who've had a chance to study it say that it tells a previously unknown story about the legendary Viking king Harold Bluetooth and his elite warrior troop, the Vikings. The artifact was found close to Wolin in the northwest of Poland, which makes sense because this is where the Viking Jomsborg's fortress stood between the years 960 and 1043. Viking legends say that the Vikings received special training within the fortress. The Icelandic sagas talk of them almost as if they were superheroes. The inscription on one side of the disc translates as Harold Gormson, King of the Danes, Scania, Jomsborg, Town of Oldenburg. The other side features a Latin cross in the middle of four decorative dots. Historians didn't previously know who started the Vikings or when but it now seems likely that the king himself sponsored the elite group. There's no way of knowing who created the disc or when, but it's possible that this was a wedding gift presented to the king on the day of his second marriage during the 960s. There are so many ancient artifacts buried in Egypt that we may never find all of them. Even though hundreds of archaeological sites in the country have been fully excavated over the years, there's always a new one for experts to sink their teeth into. A sarcophagus that turned up at a construction site in Alexandria in December 2019 is a great example. The 2,000-year-old black sarcophagus dates back to the Ptolemaic period and was found 16 feet below ground level by workers from the Supreme Council of Antiquities in Sidi Gaber 
as they built new offices in the area. The coffin is still sealed, but a heavily weathered bust found alongside it might have provided a clue as to who the occupant might be if it were in better condition. Sadly, time and nature have eroded the bust very badly. Only wealthy people from that era would have been buried in such a heavy black granite sarcophagus. So when the 15-ton lid of the casket is finally lifted away, we may find that it contains the remains of a long-lost leader. Perhaps even Alexander the Great. Don't hold your breath waiting to find out, though. Full excavation may take five years. The 2nd century BCE Roman scholar Cicero once wrote that coinage was being tossed around so that no one was able to know what he had. Historians have never been sure what he meant by the puzzling phrase, which is in his manuscript, De Officius, but as of April 2022, they're beginning to develop new theories after carrying out a detailed study of ancient Roman coins. The study has revealed that the denarii minted during the 1st century BCE were cut with 10% more copper than coinage minted during the 2nd century BCE. The older coinage had been made from pure silver. Experts think that the sudden debasement of the coinage might indicate that there was a financial crisis in the Roman world of the time, and that citizens no longer had confidence in the value of their money. The Romans were at war with their allies elsewhere in Italy at the time, and the war came close to bankrupting them. The crisis was finally averted by Gratidianus, modifying the exchange rate between the silver denarius and a bronze coin known as the as, thus preventing the debased coins from dropping in value. Now we think about it, we wonder why nobody made the link between this and Cicero's words a lot earlier. The Tholos tomb of Tyrans can be found in Nea Terinthia in Greece. It's a strangely shaped tomb featuring an unusual beehive design, and historians believe it was created to house the remains of a mysterious Greek cult hero. The tomb was in excellent condition when it was discovered on the side of Prophetis Elias Hill in 1913, but there was no sarcophagus inside it. The only things the archaeologists who broke into the tomb discovered were a potsherd, a large round stone that might have been used as an altar, and a rectangle-shaped stone with a square-shaped indentation carved into its surface. The purpose of that stone is unknown. Without a casket, there's no way of knowing who the tomb was built for. It's only called the Tomb of Tyrans because it's on the same hillside as the Citadel of Tyrans. An analysis of the postured suggests that the tomb was built and prepared for a cult hero, but we have no way of knowing who the cult hero was or what they'd done to deserve such a lavish tomb being built for them. All we know is that it was created somewhere between 3300 and 3400 years ago. The seemingly unfinished altar and carved stone, coupled with the absence of a sarcophagus, suggests that the tomb may not even have been used after it was built. There are a lot of strange stories about Davalis Cave on Pendeli Mountain in Greece. We know that monks lived here in the distant past, and it's also served as a convenient den for thieves. But what are we to make of the many people who swear they've seen demonic figures with cloven hooves walking between the buildings? Davalis Cave takes its name from the locally famous 19th century brigand Davalis, who used the cave as a hideout and is said to have had his men carve secret tunnels that could reach as far as the mansion of a French duchess who lived in the middle of the village. There's no sign of the tunnels at the site, but there is a very rare double Byzantine church carved directly into the face of the rock by 12th century Christian hermits. Before the Christians arrived, the cave was used by worshippers of Pan, Many pan-related relics have been retrieved from the deeper reaches of the caves, including figurines, musical instruments, and the mummified body of a woman. Electronic instruments are said to cut out without explanation in the middle of the cave, water is said to run uphill rather than down, and cat-like creatures walking on hind legs have been sighted in the darkness. Even the locals give this old hideout a miss. The spheres of Odostal in South Africa only count as mysteries if you're prepared to ignore mainstream scientists. According to mainstream scientists, 
They're simply beautiful old stones that were formed over millions of years. They're elaborate and complex, but they're a product of Mother Nature. The reason that they can't possibly have been created artificially is that they were found in three billion year old prophylite deposits. There was no intelligent life on Earth three billion years ago. Ergo, there can't have been anyone around to create the Odostal spheres. However, there are Christian and Hindu groups who both claim that the spheres are proof that certain texts and scriptures within their holy books are accurate. And there are also fringe theorists who say that the Otostal spheres were left behind by ancient astronauts. A few of those fringe theorists even say that the existence of the spheres is concrete proof of the existence of extraterrestrial life. To Christians, they are proof that there was an intelligent, advanced civilization that existed on Earth before the Biblical Flood. The most likely explanation for their existence is that the scientists are right, and they were created through natural processes, but there's just enough doubt to keep things interesting. In 1928, excavation work at the Royal Cemetery in the Iraqi town of Ur led to the discovery of two utterly perplexing works of ancient art. One of them in particular has gone on to achieve worldwide fame. It's the statue that's known as the Ram in a Thicket, and it's in such startlingly good condition you could easily believe that it was created within the past 12 months. In reality, it's more like 4,500 years old. While it's a beautiful work of Mesopotamian art, working out what it's supposed to represent has proven to be a challenge beyond the skills of everyone who's tried it so far. The statue was found in the same tomb as the remains of many royal servants, and so it may have a meaning connected to servitude and duty, but that's just a guess. Its name comes from an Old Testament biblical tale from Genesis, where Abraham sacrifices a ram caught in a thicket in place of his own son. But that's unlikely to be the inspiration for the piece. We'll probably never know what the artist's intentions were, or why nothing else like this has ever been found elsewhere in Mesopotamia. Rope making is an ancient and important human tradition and skill. We still use it today, and we'll continue to use it for as long as human beings find purposes for rope. But it might surprise you to learn how far back in time the tradition goes. Here's an example of a rope-making tool that was created more than 40,000 years ago. The tool, which was found in Germany in 2016, is carved from mammoth ivory and features four drilled holes into its surface, each with a different diameter. While the possibility that this might have been an ancient musical instrument was briefly considered, experts now believe that it's more likely to have been used to make rope out of plant fibers. The precisely cut nature of these spiral drilled holes even shows that our ancestors could make ropes of different thicknesses, depending on what they might have needed to use them for. The team has provided strong evidence to support their theory, including a video demonstration of how the holes would be used to make rope. And so it appears that the question of how rope was made during the Paleolithic era has finally been answered. Ancient artwork isn't always easy to interpret. What are we to make of this pottery bust, which was created in East China some 7,300 years ago? The person depicted on the bust appears to be smiling, but why do they have so many perforations running across their face? Are they male or female? What's the meaning of the symbol on their headdress? None of these questions has ever been answered conclusively. The curious face is one of 600 artifacts that were found at a late Stone Age site in Shangdong village, Anhui, in 1985. The age of 7,300 years was determined after carbon-14 technology was used to test it. The purpose of the artifact, however, eludes us. It's unlike anything else that's ever been found elsewhere in China. Every other item recovered during the 1985 excavation was either a weapon or a recognizable utensil of some kind. There are perceived similarities between the symbol on the head of this figure with symbols used by the Olmec and the Maya, but that ought to be impossible because of the distance between China and South America. Might there have been contact between these ancient people? If so, how? 
Now we're off to Norway, where archaeologists believe they're getting closer to tracing the origins of the game of chess. In January 2022, an 800-year-old chess piece was unearthed in Tonsberg. Tonsberg has always piqued the curiosity of Norwegian archaeologists because it is the country's oldest city. The chess piece was found among the ruins of a 13th century building and is believed to be from the same period. The artifact is fashioned from antler, and it may formerly had a lead stand inserted into its center to keep it upright when put on a board. The fact that the piece is designed in accordance with Islamic traditions, with no human features displayed anywhere on its surface, has attracted the interest of academics. The discovery of the piece in Norway adds credence to the notion that chess originated in the Middle East, where it was clearly played by the 7th century and may date back much farther before spreading to Europe at a later time. The lack of a human figure makes identifying the sculpture difficult, but experts are confident that it is a knight. We can't help but wonder what happened to the rest of the chess pieces and the board. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.